What I'd like to do here is just take a few minutes and take kind of a 10,000 foot view of the software so you get familiar with it. We're going to be using most of these menus and icons and windows throughout the videos, but this video is being made just to get you familiar with the software a little bit before we start getting under the hood and actually using all of it. So one of the things I can do here is go to File, and I got my normal Windows functions such as New, Open, Close, Save, Save Project As, and so on. Down here it shows the most recently open projects. Under Edit, I've got my normal Cut, Copy, Paste, Delete, and so on. Under View, I can go into the View menu, and I can turn on or turn off different toolbars, and turn off or turn on different windows. Then I've got the ability to turn on or turn off the comments and the nicknames in the latter rungs. And by the way, the majority of this is available out here as icons or over here and sometimes and. Sometimes we have some features that we have under the menu, we have out here on the toolbar, and we have over here in a window where you can do it from there also. So there's multiple ways to do the same thing depending on what you want to use. Do you want to use a pull down? Do you want to use a window with a, with a little icon? with a name next to it, or you just want to use a straight old-fashioned icons up here in a toolbar. That's all your choice. For example, under instructions, I have contacts, coils, timers, counters, and so on. Those are also available over here. Timer, counter, set, reset. It's available under this instruction list window. So there's multiple places to do the same thing. So we'll take some more look at this. We have our PLC, connect, read, write, data, read, write, project. Same thing over here. If I go to PLC, I can click on connect, read, write, data, read, write, project. Very similar. Now, let's take a look at some of the icons. We've got new project, open project, save, cut, copy, find, line drawing, line eraser, zoom in, zoom out. Very, very similar to other Windows-based programs. For example, if I go here and I want to click on PLC, read project from PLC, I also have shortcut keys. So I could press Control F9 and do the same thing. I could read project from PLC over here by clicking on this icon. Read project from PLC. I could go over here to this window and click on the navigation window, the PLC tab. What they've done here is they've taken and created a navigation window and they've grouped similar functions together under tabbed menus. So I have a program menu, I have a function menu, and I have a PLC menu. Under the PLC menu, I have read project from PLC. There's multiple ways to do it. Now, the way Click was designed for the editing part of the software, it's designed as columns, like this would be column A, column B, column C, column D, and so on, and rows, or what we also refer to as rungs. Very similar to an Excel spreadsheet. Now, it's designed to have up to 32 elements in the rung. 31 of them can be contacts, and the 32nd one would be an output coil or output box or some type of an instruction to control something. Whether it be a timer or a counter, that would be the output of that rung. There will be cases when I, for example here, where I can only show four contacts because of the way the columns are set up, and I've got these windows here and here taking up space. So watch what I can do. I'm going to close the navigation window. I'm going to go over here and close the instruction list window, and I can get more up here now. No problem. I can, now I can see a whole list of contacts going across here if I have larger rungs just by closing out those windows. Now if I wanted to get those back, I can do it one of two ways. I can go to View, Window, and click on the navigation window, or I can just click on a t the icon here and it pops up. I click on the instruction list icon and that pops up. But again, it shortens up the space here. Not a big deal, but if you need more space, then close out these windows and you probably will be able to gain a considerable amount of space and you could also zoom in or zoom out to get more space. There's multiple ways to do it. You can close the windows, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. It makes it very convenient when it comes to programming depending on what features you need and how much space you need on the screen. Now there's one button over here called the syntax check. This is a fairly important icon. Normally when you create a ladder program, you put contacts and coils in here, which we'll be doing in the videos. When you're all done and you're ready to download it into the PLC to run it, you would click on Write Project into PLC. 
Before it writes the project, it does what's called a syntax check. It checks to make sure that your rung of code is valid. For example, if you had a missing line here, it wouldn't let you download it because you have to have a complete rung from this power rail here over to the output field. If you have a broken line, it can't download it. If you're missing an end, it can't download it. So what happens is when you go to download the project, the first thing it does is run a syntax check. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and just run a syntax check separately without downloading it. And look what happens. We get a window down here called the output window. This is a very important window. It will tell you whatever errors you have in your program that are stopping you from downloading it. If you have no errors, it will say no errors. Right now it says I have one error and, and zero warnings. And what is the error? End instruction is missing in the main program. So I can go over here to the main program if I want, and I can go down here to the list of instructions and pick the end and put it out there. So if I, if I were to put one out here, at the end of the program, if there was ladder rungs in here that I had created, I would always put the end command at the end of the rungs. I could then run the syntax check again, and I would not have an error in my output window. You want to get familiar with this window because it is going to be popping up every time you go to download a project or run a syntax check and it's kind of a big brother looking over your shoulder to make sure that your program is valid. Now please be aware, when I say the program is valid, it doesn't mean your machine's going to run right. Absolutely not. It just means that the code you created is able to be compiled and run by a PLC CPU. It's just a valid code. Valid code doesn't mean machine runs, right? It just means valid code. You have to go and download this and test it with your machine so to make sure that it does what you want it to do. Another nice little feature here is under the view menu, for example. I can go under here and click on toolbars and click off, turn off the PLC toolbar. Well, if you notice what happened up here just now, I lost the toolbar completely for all the PLC functions. They're available under the pull down. They're also available over here under the tab. Now, I didn't lose it, I didn't damage it, they're not gone forever. If I want to bring them back, all I have to do is go up here to View, Toolbar, click on PLC, and they're back. If I don't like where they're sitting, I can grab them and I can move them up here. I can take that whole group and I can move it wherever I want it to be. I can take any one of these groups of icons and move them to where I want them to be so it looks and feels the way I want the software to look and feel. So what I suggest you do is look under the hood Go through some of the menus. I went through some of them for you and give you a little idea of what's under here. There's multiple places to do the same thing. You have the pull downs, you have the icons, you have the navigation window with the tabs. You can do it from multiple places, the same function, but always remember something. This is a tool. This is a crescent wrench, a screwdriver, a hammer, a sledgehammer. This software is going to allow you to get into PLC download your program, download your projects, edit the projects, download them again, see what's happening in the CPU, get error messages and so on. So it is a tool for you to use when it comes to programming and debugging Click PLCs. And if you don't know where the different things are when it comes to programming or troubleshooting, you'll have a very difficult time using it to fix or troubleshoot or debug or program a Click PLC. I went over some of the menus with you, I went over some of the windows with you, I just wanted to get you familiar with the software and now you can take some time and go through it yourself on your software package and look at the different features it has to offer for you.